Hello everybody, I'm Kate Fogger and this is Julie Hurt and together we are Making Light. Uh, so we're going to do something a little bit different this week. Um, I, Julie has a sty, would you call it a sty? Yeah. On her eye. Yeah. On her right eye, which I had done some healing on and I'd said to let me know if it needed more. And she did. And it started a conversation as we went through the healing. So I just think we thought we'd just record it because I think so it'll be a sort of combination of uh, energy healing, which is what I do, body code and emotion code, and um, intuitive work as well, because obviously we, we like to mix it all up a bit. So I had just asked the first thing I do, I do actually follow the body code, which is, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but um, just ask about, so I'd like, the first thing I ask is if there's any negative emotions or trapped emotions that are affecting your eyes. So it's affecting your eyes ability to heal because basically um, any dis-ease, which is where disease comes from in the body can lead to inflammation or whatever. Um, you associated with a few of them, I think it was discouragement, wasn't it? Self-abuse. Um, this is another one as well. Self-abuse was over the weekend when it was really big and you did body code and self-abuse made sense to me. What was, there was the second one. There was a discouragement was the first one. Yeah. Um, Which that makes sense. I can't remember. Anyway, then we got to abandonment. Yeah. And you looked a bit confused. So I asked what age. So um, uh, a session with somebody new, I, I would probably go through what the emotion is, what age it was, let them think, but, you know, because it's a, it's not necessary, but it helps build people building trust in what you're doing because it's like, oh, oh, I remember that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but me and my high powered fast track healing, I don't do that anymore unless it unless it's significant to the person. Obviously, if it's about something where they, they need to let it go or that there's some benefit in it. But you look confused about that. So I asked, and then I got age 15, and you immediately said that's when I was diagnosed with scoliosis and had to get a brace I had the boss for those of you who <laughs> there's a couple different kinds of braces and I had the Boston brace which is where it comes up to right underneath my breasts and it was a whole form fitting fiberglass thing and it went down below my hips behind my butt so my butt became super flat and like had this hard material and it laced in the back. It's almost like a, it's really like a corset and it laced in the back. And then there's pads um, where the spine is moving in the wrong direction to try to push it back. Um, so that as you continue to grow, your spine begins to straighten and they want to see like, um, how do I see that? Uh, they want to see that the, that the curvatures, I have four curves in my back. Um, that they want to see the four of them kind of dissipate a little bit, which they did after I got it when I was 15 and I believe I wore it for at least a year and a half, if not two, and you start to wean out of it and all that type of stuff. But, but it was interesting because when you said, so when we do intuitive work, even when we do intuitive coaching, we ask what age did the negative belief start and then you say the age and you ask the client what was going on at that time. And you may not even remember, but, but you'll have something will come to mind anyway. So it was interesting to me that the first thing that came to mind was scoliosis, because I remember to some degree, like taking it in stride, like when I was younger and I got braces on my teeth, took it in stride. It is what it is. And I remember that's kind of like my attitude of my life is like, it is what it is. And just, eh. How, oh, and as I say this now, it's like, it's triggering some, as I say that it's triggering something else. This attitude of it is what it is. That feels as, like a workaround. Yep. This idea of passivity. Um, it is what it is. So I won't necessarily have to do, like, I don't have to do anything about it because it is what it is, which my big negative belief of the four which are not lovable, not good enough, not safe, secure, protected. Mine is not worthy. My big one that I'm working on, I have all four, but the big one of late has been not worthy. So I'm not worthy to even, I'm not even worthy to like either grieve or be upset about it or 
be pissed about like I always look on the bright side of life but I can see how I can even take it like a step further or a step in a direction that maybe doesn't serve me notice I do not say wrong because there is no wrong <laughs> but that where I can see now where it's like oh it doesn't serve me which is coming up right now as I look for ways to um, market grow my business do different things I just, I'm thinking like, well, why don't I'll, I, I'll see something and I'm like, oh, so-and-so should do that. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Why don't I do that? Like, this is a new feeling that I have right now. Kate's got a cold. Um, so <laughs> ask us Lucas. Um, so I can see where this comes up. Anyway, I'm going to go back to when you first said school 15 and I said scoliosis. Um, the, and you said abandonment too. And I was like, I could see how I felt even more of a freak. I had always kind of felt like a freak and apart, apart from my family, apart from people around me because of my interests, because when I would share like my favorite movie, people would say, oh, that's a Julie movie. We don't want to watch that because people would find them boring. Um, people would think that the books I read were boring. Like, it's just this whole, there was this whole thing around what my interests were, were odd and therefore not normal. And so I, to some degree, I embraced that and actually pushed against it in that I would bring my freakness further out. But at the same time, I would also use it as a shield. So that brace, I actually used like I would pretend I didn't care what people thought of me. The brace itself did a couple things physically. It would create this line on the back of my pants, right where my butt cheeks ended, because the way the brace was shaped, it would wear the fabric. So I would get these fade marks with two smiles underneath my butt. <laughs> and I hated that. I was so nervous about that. And in American high schools, at the time, I don't know if they still do, they taught American square dancing, which is, you know, full of form of folk dancing. And, um, and there's a lot of hand holding. My hands perspire. I have hyperhidrosis. My hands perspire when I'm nervous, which at that time, all the time. <laughs> and so not only did I have to have a guy hold my hand, but I also had to have men, guys, boys put their hands on my fiberglass hips. And I remember just always recoiling in that too. But at the same time, I also worked at an ice cream place. And so we, the whole ice cream place was like a whole glass front. And then you had this little slider door and you'd hand the ice cream cones through there. But I would, I would taunt the little kids. We had a knife up front because of making banana splits. And I would take the knife and jab it into my gut because I had my brace there and I'd freak the kids out just for fun. So I don't know. So I can see, I just, I can see how the scoliosis brought up, you said abandonment, it brought up scoliosis and how I used like anything that made me different. I use not only as, yeah, I'm different, but also as a shield so that no one could see that I didn't feel I was worthy. That is the most articulate I have ever been around all of that. And I feel really good. Good for you. <laughs> all that from the sky. <laughs> all so that from the sky. Which, okay, so here's a question for you. This is the second sty in what, a couple months? And these styes are really different from styes I used to get. It used to just kind of plug the eye, the real edge of the eyelid. These are like, it does that. And then they retreat and form these big bumps in the middle of my eyelid. Like, what is that? Is that just, is it just different? Or is that a different, do you know what I mean? Like, are they different because of crap? <clears throat> <laughs> because of what crap <laughs> well, let's ask let's I, I wouldn't normally do this in a healing session but okay, okay since it's you so i'm going to ask my guides what the significance mm. of julie's eyes is what is the significance of julie having stars Not sure this makes good viewing. I'm trying to get my brain out of the way because immediately what comes to me is it's about how you see things, but you know, that might be a bit vanilla. That's okay. Which makes sense, but oh yeah. 
I'm getting that there's a battle going on inside you about how you want to see things and how things really are. Hmm. Can we get more clarity on that? Yeah, what, what way am I supposed to see it? <laughs> it would be helpful. I am, it's, that's true. That's really, really true. It's just a classic, um, it's just a classic law of attraction to talk about it. You know how you want to see things, you want to see them a certain way, but every now and then you get reality blasting in your oh. ears. So there's a conflict there. So why is it? Um, it's a reminder to be careful what you look at. Oh. Hmm. Any guidance on what I should look at or what I shouldn't look at? Any, either way, just to kind of help. I can automatically. So the, um, the little things, and you do a lot of this anyway, um, with your posting and stuff, all the little things that you notice, little frogs that speak to you, little flowers that you see, little, just little things. There's so much joy in them and there are so many of them and they all add up to huge things. That's what they're saying. Like when you get on that roll, which I know you do, you just need to do more of it where, you know, you start to see something, you start seeing signs, you start seeing things, you start. And that is your, ha I'm hearing happy eyes. Mm -hmm. When you're in that state, you, you, you know, everything looks good. You're not worrying about the rah over here, right. which is the, you know, the reality, the bills, the where do we go from here? What's going to happen? The family, the, you know, partner, all that stuff mm -hmm. and all that worry. So that's what you should be looking away from when it's worry. Obviously, you can't avoid all of it. But that you, you know, that, that's, that's your happy eyes and that's your happy place. Mm -hmm. You just need to find more of it, Julie. Because yeah. at the moment you're being sucked back to the dark side. Right. So it's so interesting as you said that about the the little things that I see, like when I see something on a flower, or I see a bug or the tiny little frogs, the tree frogs, which they keep popping into my house. It's so cute. They're so cute. Um, see that, 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 that's happy, Julie. Yeah, I could feel as you were talking about, it, I could feel my vibration rising and I was just feeling like absolute joy. So, and so then, tell me if you give a shit about money right this minute. Do I give a shit about money right this minute? <laughs> right. Yeah, don't think about the question. Because I mean, no. like, <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> and I'm like, and therein lies the battle. I, yep. Okay. That clarified it. So, okay. One, um, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, for the benefit of other people, and we both know this, but it's really, you know, it is what it is what it is with your money whatever you thinking about it ain't helping anything that's really the point it's like there is not a single problem in the world that is made better by worrying about it no and i heard this too was it you said it and then i think i heard i heard someone on oprah say it i think you told me i think you mentioned it that the world we won't be able to think our way right. einstein said this i think you can't the mind that created the problem is not the mind that's going to get us out of it. Yeah, no, I didn't know that, but that, yes, and that's true. Yeah. And, true. you know, even whether you believe in law of attraction or not, you can see that worrying about a problem does not add anything to the mix. It just makes you unhappy. No, but, you, and you know what else is funny is on top of, okay, I know law of attraction. I know to try to find like a happy place. I know to say, okay, I have, my calendar is booked and I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I know to do all of that. And then when um, nothing, either nothing happens or I can't quite feel it. I can't feel it when I'm doing it. I beat myself up that I'm not doing, I can't, I did it. And I'm like, oh God, I just get so but in my head. Yeah. If you stepped outside at that moment, mm -hmm. like you don't, this is something Abraham Hicks says, you don't have to be happy about the thing that you're bothered about. You just need to be happy. You know, when you, she says, oh, everything in the world is, is, is a stick. You've got two ends of the stick. You've got the happy end and the not so happy end. So you've got money and lack of money. You've got love and lack of love or everything. 
but you can pick up your I love my animal stick it doesn't have to be the money stick like humans think if money is the issue you need to fix the money stick usually that's the stick you need to stay away from because that's the stick you can't pick up the right end of so if you can't pick up the right end of that stick pick up a different stick pick up the oh little, little frogs that stick because little frog stick is going to help the other stick that's what and that's if you, humans always want to home in on what's gone wrong instead of looking at all the things that are right yeah. so that's what they're saying is they're saying that you're I, I just see like lots of little 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 bits you there's loads of these little things julie these little little things and it doesn't matter that they're little because to you, they build up to a huge thing it's it's actually it's the little things that's going to change your world not the big nah over here it's the little things because it's keeping that vibration high that's going to make the difference cool does, does that make sense yes it makes sense and it feels so much better it feels so let's better. go back we'll go back to your eye then just to finish it off shall we yes well yeah and then once that then i've got another question about my eyes okay so, no you can ask we can go back to it so both eyes around both of them for you gosh since before i left alaska they've had eczema right around my eyes so i'm just curious if that's all part of it too because it's interesting that everything is like on my eyes you know uh, I, I just want to prefix with this with i am not a medical intuitive so we are we are just winging it here in that i do energy healing i have access to guides so i'm going to ask my medical guys to step forward now this is for <laughs> if i have some purposes only there you go this is what's that this is for entertainment purposes only that's our disclaimer okay they say you need to crush up a vitamin c tablet and rub it four times a day over your eyebrows they don't i'm kidding no. <laughs> I would love to get guides that said that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. that, that, that is, I got sent this thing by my friend Kathy, um, and it's called the Tone Courts of Atonement Fasting. I'll send it to you. But the lady had said that she had got something stuck in her eye, pepper or something like, and it was absolutely excruciating, and that she'd been to the hospital. They couldn't, I can't remember. Anyway, so she actually asked her guys, and she said her guys don't normally give her like explicit that sort of information. And they told her to to hold an onion up to her eye and then to touch it on her eye. And she was like, <laughs> but she did it and it flushed. It, she had such a violent reaction with the tears that it flushed right out. And she said that for her was her first leap of faith. Oh. To just, but I was thinking, but, but she prefixed it with, I don't normally get this sort of information from my guide. So it's just interesting how how stuff comes through so anyway let's so is the x is the x one related so i got this intuitively whether it's from the guides or intuitive I, I i don't understand if it's i got this before i even asked the question i was just kind of connecting in to just make sure i had a clear connection the x one seems to be more to do with touching like touching my eyes yeah oh um oh. does that make sense at all um it might have it's it's so much better than it was but i don't know if it's do you wear lenses um no not anymore no i can't my eyes i have dry eye i'm just wondering if wearing glasses means you touch your eyes less i don't know i mean that's just me kate not oh that um, could be that could be it's interesting too hmm. it feels like the eczema is due to touching and it's but it's also to do with dehydration of the skin i let me must test that okay. is the eczema made worse it's okay it's made worse by dehydration dehydration of the body yes um oh sorry i shouldn't really mix modes should i hey it doesn't matter they'll tell you no but you have to sort of choose one or the other other otherwise i'm oh, getting oh, oh, oh. i got you. you know i need well no let me rephrase that what i'm saying is i need to be clear what i'm asking if you ask a lot of questions you, you're going to get a lot of different answers because they don't know what question you ask so I'm going to say, tell me more about the eczema. 
Now, I hear that I was joking about the vitamin C, but actually vitamin C wouldn't be a bad thing. To rub, to write? Vitamin, no, to take it. Oh, oh well, let me, yeah, let, that makes oh, sense. Okay. Let me check that, actually, because I just assume. Okay. It's a no, to take it or does Julie, so now I'm muscle testing, does Julie need vitamin C? Yes. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, and that's something to do, and I am not a doctor again, but I'm just getting this image of like, the skin when it's plump and moist um, from moisturized, and that's something to do with vitamin C. I don't know if that's true, as in that your skin is better hydrated if you have more vitamin C. Oh. Anything else Julie needs to know about her eyes? Just hearing that vitamin C better nourishes your skin. When your skin is better nourished, it holds more moisture and the um, eczema would reduce. But also you just need to be careful about touching it because of yep. stuff on your fingers. Okay. Okay. Huh. So vitamin C, would it help with dry eyes too? That makes sense. Try it. Okay. We'll see. I shall okay. Look. I'm going to go back to the sty. Um, so is there anything? So now back to muscle testing. Is there anything else we can do for the sty and eye? Yes. Are there any other negative energies? Yes. Is it mental energy? So I've got a saboteur, which is um, somebody sends energy to you and not, not in a good way. It's not necessarily vindictive. We've all done it. You know, just like, like if, um, when I first started doing this, I got really freaked out because I found all these saboteurs on Sally the cat, but I knew exactly when it had happened. Like she'd run under my feet. I've nearly fallen over, but, you know, and I'd gone, ah, you know. So literally all it requires is a negative emotion and intent that somebody feels towards you. So cutting you up in traffic, you cut someone up in traffic, somebody's just in a bad mood, just, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's not necessarily someone sitting there with a cauldron going, <laughs> it's just bang, instant. Um, can we remove that saboteur? Yes, because no, any other energies? Yes. So we're back to the is, is it a resonance yes so back to a resonance is it a resonance of abandonment yes so that not only is there trapped emotion you actually have a resonance there's a lot of stuff stored there from when you were 15 so a resonance is just like almost like a reverberation hmm. of the negative emotion let's just remove that anything else we can remove from the eye so i'm just going to ask is there an infection in the eye yes is it bacterial no is it a virus yes are styes viruses i can't remember i mean what do you from have? a body is it is a is it a virus or a bacteria i think it is a virus the sty isn't it i don't know i thought it was i did think it was bacteria because your tear duct backs up um so, but it could be a virus too. As to well, yeah, I don't know. To be fair, that in the body code, it recognizes um, inflammation at such a tiny level, you might never know that, you know, it's not necessarily something that we become aware of physically. But I'm getting you do have a viral infection. Is it, is a viral infection in the eye? Yes. So then I ask, can, are there any tract emotions supporting that viral infection? Yes. Can we remove them? Yes. Do I need to know what they are? No. Okay, let's remove them. Can we remove the virus infection? Yes. Does Julie need any other physical support? That means like drugs or no, I get no for that. Can we remove any toxins given off by the virus? Yes. Is there anything else we can do to remove the virus? No. Do you still have a virus? No. Anything else we can do for the eye? No. Um, I just had a vision of like an eye bath with saline, salty water, but I presume like really, because if you lift your lid up like that, can you see the other side of it? Is there a... Oh, I have to look. I haven't looked. If there's something on the other side, but that would make sense that there is because it has felt like there's been something in my... It doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm... I just saw an eye bath, you know, like, yeah, oh, I, I don't know if they're old fashioned, but I haven't seen one, you know, you get the eye bath and salty water, but I'm presuming by salty water, it's 
gently salt, salty so as not to hurt your eyes, but that would be helpful. To just do an eye wash kind of thing? Okay. I can do that. That makes sense. Okay, that's all I can do for now. Okay. Thank you. So we, we started recording now because I didn't know if you wanted to look further at now that we've fixed you. <laughs> Sorry, nobody is fixed. We're all fixed. Everybody's perfect just as we are. Yeah. Um, we're just helping the body heal. If you want to look more at a bit. Your thing, your... Yeah. Well, there was discouragement was the first one. And I can't remember what the second one was because that one made sense too. Um, but discouragement has come up for me lately because, and it's all tied to our, I am the finance minister in our house. I've always been the finance minister and I've always felt like I have a really good handle in a, in an approach to money. However, lately that's not been the case. And instead I've become- well, My guides are stopping me there. Okay. And they're saying it's not that you're not on top of it. It's just not, you just haven't got the result you want. It's not because you're not on top of it. You know exactly what you're on top of. True, true. Okay. The thing that's entered the picture for me, I realize, or not entered the picture is making it, I'll say is making itself known, is fear that I've had all around money probably my whole life, but it's really coming to the forefront now to actually, now it's time to dance is what I hear. That's what I hear right now. Now it's time to dance and we're going to realize that this no longer serves me. You and me both love. Remember last week? Say what? <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. I mean, last, last week was about more than just that. That was about everything. But the week before I was all about money and you, you, you said all that. Yeah. Yeah. It at least my attachment to money. Mm hmm and we've talked about that now. I don't know whether we aired it because Kate's been basically on holiday for <laughs> after we haven't done any editing at all. So I'm not sure this might be a retake. But that's what you said. And, and I had a big aha. And I don't know if we talked about it. I think we did in that, like you, like me, have actually always been better off than your partner or spouse. And actually, that's a huge defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. As in, I have always known that I don't fucking need you. Well, there's been like, for me, if my negative belief is not worthy money and having a handle on money allowed that to me, the handle on money is a workaround in that I then felt worthy. So and safe and safe, all the things and lovable, all the things, right. And good. I don't think it makes you lovable, truly. <laughs> My experience. Yeah. <laughs> so at this moment, as I'm having to look at money in a, it's coming to the forefront and I'm going to, and I need to look at it differently and release the attachment to it. It's how it's, it's showing me. Uh, I'm asking how I want to say this because I'm really trying to think through this. I tried to talk about it the other night at Slick Mastermind, which was too late for you, so you couldn't join. And it came out all jumbly. And I realized afterwards it came out jumbly just because I get so nervous around even expressing it. Um, but I, a workaround was controlling money and having a handle on it. And there was an abundance of it. So handling it was fine. And I go, yeah, fine, put it away. Not, I didn't ever have to deal with it. Now the situation with money as far as income in this household has shifted. It's shifted over the last couple of years when I um, was released from my advertising career. Um, all of it shifted. And so now I'm having to look at it and really kind of confront this um, control and what does it actually mean? And how am I, how, how I want, I want to say how am I worthy regardless of money is how it really feels right now. Like money doesn't make me worthy. Money doesn't make me more lovable. Money doesn't solve any problems, really. We all know that we know, I know this. It's just nice to have. <laughs> and it's not that I don't have it. I actually do. It's just things are really different. 
And it, and I'm really trying not to put the control over it again, because I realize that the control doesn't necessarily serve me. I, there's something in there about having like a healthier dance with it. Like I will say, I've said to you, I've even said to Brad, money flows, money, money flows in, it flows out, it flows in, it flows out. Abraham Hicks says that too. And it's easy to say when you've got plenty of it. Yeah, it's easy to say when you start to realize, oh my, when you're kept up at night, which last week I kept waking up in the middle of the night and having these huge panic attacks and oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I'm like, and my guides, I could feel the guides and angels come around me and go, we've got this. Will you just let it go? It's just really hard. It's hard. It's hard to practice, which we've said all along. I'm just going to say we've said all along, but I don't know. That's, that's where I am right now. That's where I am right now. So what does surrender look like to you? To surrender to what is my, to what? I don't know what I'm, I, maybe I don't know what I'm surrendering to. Faith. I suppose so that's the word because i see a parallel between where i was last week yeah I'm, yeah. Not sure I, I'm not sure i want to articulate again i haven't watched that because it was too painful <laughs> but my was what well, specifically about money it'd been money the week before but specifically last week was like everything like what the fuck am i doing that you know and your guides was saying that i needed to I don't know if it's surrender is the right word. Um, but you, one thing that you said, and I don't know if this is, this, I might have to cut this, when I work out. I like not getting it like everyone else, because as long as I have the ability to hide behind other things, I don't have to turn my light on. So this is all about me. I, in my words, surrendering to my intuitive abilities in other words actually acknowledging that this is who I am and that I'm good at it and that things I receive are real and because I, I get it on you know in bits but I haven't been able as we've talked about on numerous occasions being able to jump over the edge what was getting me upset was the guys going just let go right which is what people say about money just let go and you're like if I could fucking do that I would like that's not helpful and that's what was getting me like uh, 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 because it's like I understand intellectually what that means and this is exactly the same with money so I would be interested in your perspective so from a financial perspective the worrying about money doesn't help in the same way as me worrying about who I am and whether it's real or not if I just go sure fuck it will be fine it would be how do you surrender to that Surrender. Is that, is, is that close enough or, or do you think it's a... How do you surrender to letting go of... Well, it's trust, isn't it? It is. It's, there, yeah, which is another big thread I'm working on right now too. But, but this is all trust. All of this is about you're trusting that, that financially it's going to work out. You're trusting that the clients will come. You're trusting that... Um, I, I'm trusting that my intuitive abilities, you know, that what I'm hearing is real. I'm trusting that, I'm, you know, that it's all real. I'm trusting that... Um, everything will work out it's all trust it's a leap of faith where you just go well do you know whatever whatever is is it'll be fine yeah yes and there was something when you got discouragement and there was something else whatever that middle one was because I started to talk about passivity rejection oh rejection Oh, yeah, that's always, yeah, which goes with the thing that happened, the abandonment, rejection and abandonment to me feel a lot, feel, for me, feel really kind of tied. Um, there was something too, we started to talk about, oh crap, now I just lost my train of thought. What did I start to say? Oh, about, passivity. yeah, there's, there is an element of um, what's kind of come to light of late is, um, tr I, th I think I'm just kind of thinking as I'm talking, I think I can use, um, passivity as a workaround. And, 
in that, and I will take trust and letting go in faith. I will take those as a permission to be passive and, and, and maybe, and I guess this is what I'm seeing. So I, okay. So do you know the toys that are toy? It's like a toy that people put on their desk and it's like six like metal balls or whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, cause I think I may have said, and I don't think, I think we were recording, like I've always been an optimist and I've always let things, oh, that is, that is how it is. That is how it is. Yeah, um, because you don't have to fight with it then. Exactly. Yeah. And you don't have to prove yourself and you can't lose. Exactly. However, yeah. like I almost took, it's almost like the pendulum or whatever that thing is swinging back. And it's like, yes, you, optimism is great and faith and all that is great. It's still, but it's like inspired action. I'm hearing that phrase that you said the last time too, the inspired action. You, you, I, I need to, I feel like now's the time where the passivity and like, oh, okay, just let it go. And I'm just, oh, see, it's just going to let it be. Not that that's bad. Just for me in this moment, it's like you've, I've done that. I, and to do that even stronger is now it's like the inspired action. Cause I think I said, like, I saw an ad and I'm like, oh, so-and-so should do that, whatever it was. I'm like, no, I need to do that. Like, why do I keep letting it pass by me? I should, I need to be able to take, not take control, that's the wrong words, but I need to step into it and be inspired to take that action, if that, if I'm making sense at all. Whereas I'm, I was using passivity a bit, maybe in a way that didn't serve me. Okay, well, this takes us back to another question I have though, and that's just it, is when is, a, a the need for action driven out of fear or driven out of inspired action. Yeah. So okay. when you see a Facebook ad and you saw that webinar and you read it and you thought, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I've got enough to do. Right. Move yeah. on. Yeah. Then you have another bad sleepless night and you see it again. And you know, oh, maybe this will fix my abundance. Is that fear or is that inspired action? See, I don't know. And I don't know if it's just that we are too close to these things um, and that these things are more clear when they come in a big booming voice with lots of light bulbs but I do struggle with that because as you know there's loads of stuff I want to do because I think it's going to help me and it's going to save me and it's going to be the thing that makes a difference and I'm not always sure what of that is inspired action and what of that is just overactive imagination because I'm scared we're not even not even driven by fear but just and actually let me rephrase that with you and I I don't think it's so much driven by fear it's driven by our workarounds that, that need us to do something yeah absolutely yeah absolutely but then on the other hand is it going to do you any harm to go on a webinar that that makes you feel better if it doesn't make you feel better switch it off exactly well yeah and this particular webinar it's one hour it's before business hours if you will it's free um it's and the, the three questions, and it's somebody that I, I have had experience with before and admire, but the three questions that she asked, it, those are the three questions that have been on my mind of late. And by late, I mean the last couple of weeks. And so I'm- I, I would say that's a sign, Julie. You say what? I would think that was a sign. Yeah, and that's where I thought it was a sign. And, because I am also acknowledging, as we both acknowledge about the do something, like my plate is, my plate is really overflowing again. In that I don't, I um, have a lot of stuff um, that at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. And to some degree, I don't always feel like I've made steps forward. Um, but not, it's so interesting, side. Side note, my husband said, you need to start tracking your time and see what you do so that you can see where your time goes. And I think he wanted to see where I give stuff away and I wanted to, or when where maybe I waste time. But what's interesting to me is actually how much I'm doing every single day. No wonder I'm tired, but I don't feel, also don't feel super focused either. So, so it's, you're not giving stuff away then? No. No, not at all. I'm not. Well, that's good. 
Yeah, that is. Now, now, now you can not, now you don't have to answer too many more. You give them yes. that answer. Exactly. Um, yeah. I feel like we're cutting it short and I apologize for that. I would, if I was you, sit with the um, 15 year old you for a little bit. Okay, I will. And just give her a hug. Yeah. Oh, I just could start to cry right there. Yeah. And I think if you want to do a session on it, I think because that's actually sort of what I meant, but we got distracted with the eye when I said because I could see how much it's affecting you. And it, it's because it does. It's stuff like that. And that, that's now come forward to be healed. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find a lot in there that will maybe make you feel better about how you're feeling now at the moment, which is a bit out on a limb and rejected and not doing the right thing and not following the crowds and being a bit different and mm. being insecure about that as well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Huh. Fascinating. Tonight I'm going to go see Rick Springfield. So talk about 15 year old me. <laughs> hey, well, that's it. Give her a good hug and then get, get a drunk and take her to Rick Springfield. Bring our heads off. Yeah. Me and my 15 year old self. Okay. So on that note, Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Making Light, Two Humans Being. I'm Julie here. With me, as always, is the absolutely fucking brilliant Kate Fonko. Yeah. <laughs> an update on the progress of my side, which she did do stuff over the weekend and it started to heal. It's still, it's a, it just needed a little touch up. So I'll let you know next week how it's going. The last one healed though. She did that. It's fabulous. But this is for entertainment purposes only. Anyway, thank you so much. Unless you want to book a session, in which case it's all very real. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant person. Anyway, um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the section below. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we really hope to see you next time here on Making Light to Humans Being. See you later.